What's up y'all, it's Salvaje. I'm back with another Fortnite Save the World video. This is my Save the World Hero Mastery series where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play pretty much every single hero in Save the World. I'm going to go over how to play them and then I'm going to go over some of the things that you guys can run for uh, their loadouts. A couple of you guys, sometimes I review a hero and you tell me, hey listen, like, you know, what's a good loadout for this hero? Uh, so this is why I wanted to make this series. Uh, let's get right into it. So. Uh, perks. He has the Plasma Arc perk. Energy damage has a 20% chance to sap nearby enemies for 116% of damage dealt. Uh, so in other words, you're going to be getting extra damage from things that will be doing energy damage. And your Teddy is going to be doing energy damage as well. If of course you have the homie Cyberclops in your commander slot, which you should. Because this video is going to be teaching you how to play Cyberclops. You know what I mean? So yeah, long story short, he's actually pretty decent. I, I really like running him. Uh, you can run him with the Zap team perk, which I like to run. It's not super effective, it hits random enemies, but it is a little bit of extra damage that can sometimes help you out on the battlefield. And the reason why I run him with the Zap team perk is because, again, it's just a little bit of extra damage that might help you out a little bit. But also because I'm going to be running the homie Azalea Clark, which is going to be increasing my ability energy damage by 15%. And I also have the boy... Uh, intergalactic Ken and he's going to be uh, you know making it so eliminations with energy will be restoring 8.5% of my missing shields this is a big deal and the reason for that is it's because of Cyberclops playstyle which we're gonna be hopping into right now he has Teddy he has shock tower and he has seismic smash for the most part even without a hero that reduces cooldown seismic smash is gonna be really really helpful Ideally, you want to be using Seismic Smash when you sort of have a lot of husk around you, when you are fighting a refrigerator husk, and also when you are uh, going against the shielder husk, so that you can damage the shielder husk, break the shields, or and of course, Seismic Smash is also really good for the refrigerators because it's going to be knocking them down, which is going to give you a really good opportunity to finish them off really quickly, okay? So that's the main use that you're going to be using out of Seismic Smash. Seismic Smash, just consider it the move that you're going to use when you have a lot of husk around you, okay? Because, yeah guys, um, this hero doesn't really have any mobility at all whatsoever, which is why I recommend that if you do use him and you're playing him very close to the enemy spawn, which is something that you should be doing, not right on the enemy spawn like a ninja, but very close to the enemy spawn, um, you should be putting up a directional pad on the ground so that you can use it to basically escape yourself into a, into a safer area, alright? Because again, this guy has no mobility at all, but he's a... He's a damaging nightmare. The DPS that this guy brings to the table, the damage that he brings to the table, it's amazing. He's a great hero. He's got the Shock Tower. Ideally, you want to be putting the Shock Tower when you have a lot of enemies around you because, of course, the Shock Tower is going to be damaging multiple enemies. It also does energy damage, which means that you're going to be, of course, uh, there's a 20% chance that you're going to sap enemies for 116% of the damage that Shock Tower is going to do. And if you have heroes on your support team that are going to be... Uh, you know, increasing the damage of that shock tower, that's going to be great. Post commentary, Salvaje here. I actually also forgot to mention that the shock tower, when you're going against shielder husk, you can also throw the shock tower inside of the shield so that it kills the shielder husk, and you're going to be able to, of course, have an easier time with those shielder targets. I also forgot to mention Seismic Smash. If you use it from the high ground, it will go to the bottom ground. So do keep that in mind that if there is someone right below you you can just use seismic smash from above and then the energy track tra trail will travel to the through the low ground instead of the high ground that you're at for the most part with the teddy i like to use the teddy sort of um you know as an opener right you know when the husk are coming in from the long ranges and the medium ranges i'm going to be throwing down the teddy like that i have less amount of husk to actually deal with when they're at, you know when they're really really closer to me the teddy again is also going to be doing energy damage so the plasma arc perk that cyberclops has uh will be coming into the field and that's going to be helping you out a lot it's going to be helping you uh you know sort of get a little bit of uh, extra damage into those husk if you're playing cyberclops it's pretty much a must that you have to run energy based weapons okay so an energy assault rifle or a shotgun uh, an energy um, noble launcher etc etc you have to be running weapons in your kit that have energy damage so that you can maximize his loadout so for the most part uh, what I like to run with cyberclops is 
you know, primary that shoots really quickly, consistent DPS. Uh, an energy shotgun like the double boiler it's just perfect because you are going to be fighting within a lot of uh, close range scenarios with this guy as you guys are seeing in the gameplay I'm usually fighting at the close to medium ranges right like I'm never fighting at the long ranges and at the actual medium ranges I'm never fighting either right because this guy has a lot of DPS against he, he can just destroy a lot of husk so you're going to be able to get a lot of value out of him if you play him very close to the husk so that's why I really like the double boiler shotgun. And the Noble Launcher is also a really, really great tool uh, to have. And the reason for that is because it can just eliminate multiple husk. If you don't have the double boiler shotgun, do use the helium shotgun, which is great. And it goes through multiple husk. It's a top tier shotgun. You can get the Noble Launcher and the helium shotgun from the, um, what's this thing called? Uh, from the collection book, okay? So now that I just pointed that out, let's go over uh, team perks and loadouts. Wow, this video was longer than I anticipated. Uh, so um, this is the loadout that I'm currently running with Cyberclops. Okay, so I got Space Technology. I got Energy Siphon from Intergalactic Ken. Fragment Generation is a must. Okay, if you're running Cyberclops, you need Fragment Generation on every single loadout. If you don't have Fragment Flurry Jess, she will become available in the Birthday Llamas, in the Year 2 Birthday Llamas that are coming soon. So, definitely make sure that you strive to get Fragment Flurry Jess. He's a top tier Outlander. Uh, I, I'm also running Berserker for that extra Teddy damage, and I'm also rocking Bear Stare. Uh, so that my Teddy will be also firing lasers from his eyes every two seconds. That's just going to be giving me a little bit of more extra damage to my Teddy, right? Because I believe the Shock Tower and the Seismic Smash are already pretty decent and you don't really need sort of a lot of heroes for them. But I do also, you know, think that you should have some variety with this guy. So let's go over some of the other team perks and some of the other loadouts that are going to be helping you out uh, pretty, pretty well. So if you guys want, you can do a blast from the past build. You are going to be fighting a lot at the close ranges with Cyberclops. So yeah, you can do a blast from the past build and of course rock uh, the dinosaurs. I'm going to be rocking the homie uh, Jonesy, uh, Rex Jonesy. And I'm also going to be rocking uh, this lady, um, Prehistoric Isa. Or you could also run um, Paleo Luna if you do plan on using melee, which is not a bad idea. Uh, also, you need some healing, so of course, we're going to be getting healing from the homie Intergalactic Ken when it comes down to the shields. So, if you want, you could put the boy Survivalist Jonesy for that little bit of extra healing. This is basically just a loadout that concentrates on you getting a little bit of extra damage out of your weapons and you being able to stay on the front lines a little bit longer. But, I wouldn't really recommend this build at the endgame levels of play. This is more of a build that you want to use at the lower levels. Because uh, now, you know, that leads me forward to one of my last builds for this guy that I really like uh, running. So you can use Underdog, and basically for each hero that you have in your slots that uh, are epic or higher, you're going to be getting 2.5 uh, heals for every um, enemy that you're going to be destroying, okay? Uh, and the reason for that is it's because you also are going to be having survivalist Jonesy Yeah, I kind of got survivalist and underdog confused whatever you're gonna be receiving extra heals for every enemy that you have nearby You're going to be surrounded by a lot of enemies, right? Because you're gonna be fighting at, again at the close to medium ranges from the husk You're always gonna be around husk. That is the point of cyberclops. So long story short You're going to be able to be receiving a lot of healing every time that you eliminate husk because of the uh, healing that you're going to be getting from Survivalist Jonesy. Uh, I recommend that you guys run Azalea Clark on this one so that you can get the extra uh, ability energy damage. Fragment Flurry Jess, it's a must. You absolutely want to have her. If you guys want, you guys can put the homie Vanguard Southie so that you can have uh, decreased, uh, a decreased duration for the Seismic Smash cooldown. I would actually really recommend it because again, this loadout, it's basically all about fighting at the really close ranges, right? So you're going to be needing a lot of heals and Seismic Smash is really good, again, when you're really uh, overwhelmed. The Teddy's already going to be getting a buff from, you know, the Cyberclops main perk. So for the last guy, you can go with the boy Shock Specialist AC. He's going to be increasing your Shock Tower damage by 33% or... If you want, you could go with extra damage to your Teddy. 
in my eyes, I recommend the uh, Teddy to go with uh, Teddy uh, perks. And the reason for that is because, again, we're using the Teddy to do a lot of damage to the husk as they're getting closer to you. Every single husk that's going to be getting close to you, it's going to be pretty weak, right? Because we're also using our energy weapons to, you know, weaken them when they get close to us. Anyways, that's pretty much it. That's how you play the boy Cyberclops. Overall, an, an amazing hero. Top tier hero. I absolutely recommend that you guys get your hands on him if you haven't already. And I hope you guys found this video informational. And let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this in the comment sections. Peace out and please use my supporter creator code. Need that V-Book money!